Hey everyone, welcome, welcome. Hey everyone, welcome, welcome. <laughs> oh, we've got my co-host has come to help me here. Oh. <laughs> that was that was Mr. Finley Dobby. You come to say hello. 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 Hey buddy, how are you? Good. Good. Your hair is much better than your dad's. Yeah, say. that's why I'm wearing a cap, everyone. I had to, I had to figure out home haircuts. Didn't go so well. Hi, Graham. Nice to see you. We're keeping you all on mute at the moment, <laughs> just so it doesn't, doesn't, doesn't turn into a rammy. We'll, we'll get you off mute eventually. Hi, Katie. Hi, Patricia. Hi, Emma. Hi Rachel, hi Carol, hi Lawrence. So we're just going to give everyone a few minutes to, to come on in. We've got some more people waiting. Hey everyone, welcome. All right, all right. So we just we decided to do this in meeting format this time. We did webinar last last week, and it felt a little bit lonely. The only fact that you could see only our three faces, so we we thought it would be nice to see lots of people's faces today. So that's why we have it in this format. If it doesn't work next week, we'll go back to webinar format. So uh, we'll give it a try. But thanks for joining us. Thanks for taking the time out your evening. And please do feel free if you want to. Um just put your own picture up. You don't have to be live on screen if you don't want to. You can just listen and do audio if you want to. If you just want to have your picture rather than a live face, you don't. There's no rules when it comes to this. Totally. Right, we're ready to kick off, Mr. Dobby. Yeah, you can go for it. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. This is um, our second session at five o'clock on a Tuesday um, and we're going to be doing so much more of these and Andrew will be filling in on some of the context, the reasons why and, and how. But for those of you who have joined us and you don't know who I am, I'm Rachel Brown and I'm from Creative Entrepreneurs Club and Creative Entrepreneurs Club is a, a network um, for the creative sector and the creative industries. Um, we support and um, enhance, if you like, creative industry experiences around business support. So one of the things that, that we've been doing over the last few months is connecting really cool people up with each other for Skillshare. We've been looking at how we can develop projects and programs with each other and generally supporting each other through some tricky times. We never thought for a second we would be in this position as nobody did. And Andrew will kind of fill you in a bit about our journey over the last four weeks now, although it definitely feels like longer. But I'm delighted that the aim of this series is to bring us all together in some genuine, authentic conversation. There's a lot of noise right now and there's a lot of content. Everybody's moving online. One of the things that we've always done as creatives um, within Made Brave and Campfire, and Andrew will tell you a bit about that, but within our own organisation we've always had a multiple engagement with all the people that we work with. So this is not new for us but we were keen to cut through the noise, offer some quality content and tonight I'm delighted that we're going to be um, having a conversation with John Leatham. Um, who's a startup and a scale-up advisor and investor. Um, I'm, and we're going to be following, the format is we're going to be having a chat, we're going to be having Q&A. Down at the bottom, if that's where you are on my screen, there's a little button that says chat. Please feel free to put questions in there. Um, some of you who know me, you can get me directly if there's a question that you want to ask. Um, but you don't want to put it on the chat for everybody to see. You can also put privately, just put Rachel on the private button and I'll pick that up. Similarly, if you want to take that question out with this session, then we're more than happy to do that and we can answer it separately. One thing I will commit to you guys is that we will finish bang on six o'clock. Um, it's been commented quite a few times that we're all in a really tight schedule, but also we're all negotiating a whole range of different things. So I'm sure like many of you, like me, I'm homeschooling. Um, so 
quite literally anything could go on behind this curtain any second. Um, but also trying to negotiate home life and other work life. So it's important to have something that finishes on time, starts on time and engages us well. So if we, for whatever reason, overrun ever so slightly, just please exit. Don't feel the need to say goodbye if you don't want to. Um, and we can pick up with you again. We'll be here every Tuesday at five o'clock for exciting um, chat over the next probably, well, we've not really decided how long, who knows how long this is gonna last. But what you can say is that we will definitely be here for you. So thank you so much for joining us. I'm gonna pass over to Andrew. The way that this double act works is that Andrew will give you context, we'll do some q and I'll jump in and out with some questions and um, hopefully we'll have a good hour that'll be worthwhile. Over to you, Andrew. Cool. Thanks, Rachel. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Um, so thanks for joining us. This is our second webinar in this series. So my name is Andrew. I'm the founder of a and I also run a content agency over in Edinburgh called Campfire. Um, for those that don't know, um, a few weeks ago, Rachel and I came together and joined forces. So Rachel runs Creative Entrepreneurs Club. Um, I run these agencies and we, we joined forces, I suppose, to help um, with some support for the creative industries right now. Um, so we've kind of joined forces. We've created a LinkedIn group called Creative Industry COVID Support. So if you search for that, there's about 3,000 people have joined that and they're using that as a platform to share. Rachel very kindly donated her platform from Creative and Entrepreneurs Club. And we now have a job board on there. So it's creativeentrepreneursclub.co.uk. So there's people posting all sorts of jobs. You can also get one-to-one -one support on that site though. So today I, I spent a couple of hours um, talking to some people. So there's a load of us who have given some of our time um, and you can book free time with us just to pick our brain at anything you think we might be able to help. If we can do, we will give you that help. If we can't, we'll try and point you in the direction of someone else. I think Rachel maybe did about 32 of these sessions um, over the last couple of days so there's a lot of people doing and giving that support if anyone's also interested in being a helper and supporting as well and um, if you reach out to Rachel at the Creative Entrepreneurs Club she'll um, figure out if she can make that happen for you as well um, so you know with with the series as um, Rachel said we're trying to kind of do something proactive to kind of um, help and trying to bring sort of experts and people that we maybe know that can bring some value to you um, so last week, if you missed it, we had um, one of the founders uh, and chief operating officers of Skyscanner, um, Mark Logan, who talked to us about business resilience. And um, he gave a lot of great knowledge bombs. So if you didn't, if you didn't, um, if you didn't see that one, go 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 back and have a look. It's on the CEC website, the Cultural Enter uh, sorry, Creative Entrepreneurs Club website. It's also on my LinkedIn, Made Brave's LinkedIn, if you look back there as well. Um, so, you know, I think you'll all agree, or one thing we can probably all agree on, that it's been a pretty challenging few weeks. Um, you know, it's something we've all had to sort of adapt. And, you know, I think we've all gone through different stages of panic, grief, and, you know, and, and, and maybe we're now sort of trying to kind of figure out what this new normal looks like. Um, and, you know, I, I think, you know, um, what, what, what everyone first of all to know is that, you know, that's normal. These are normal feelings, normal things that are happening and it's happening to every one of us. John, myself, Rachel, we've all had conversations of, you know, um, different impacts on our lives and things. And I think it's important to be able to share and talk about that and to know that, um, you know, there's not superheroes out there that this doesn't happen to, that everyone um, has an effect in some way or another. So, um, yeah, the, you know, if you are struggling, if you don't feel like this is a platform, you don't want to talk in here, as Rachel said, feel free to turn your camera off, feel free to, you know, um, you know, just listen along um, and you know if you need to talk to someone reach out to us or reach out to there's a great organization I've just joined the Scottish committee of called NABS N-A-B-S and they're there specifically for people in the creative industries um, and supposed to help people sort of survive and thrive and 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 look after well-being so reach out to them um, but yeah no I'm delighted today to introduce John I'm going to pass you over to Rachel who'll do a little bit more of a formal introduction to John. Thank you. So John is a qualified coach, executive coach, mentor and consultant. He's got 30 years experience in the creative and tech industries, mostly focusing on business development. John has helped hundreds of individual clients achieve their ambitions, many of them through his current role at Considered Thinking. 
In 2003, John co-founded Park Circus, which is a leading global sales agency and distribution company for over 25,000 classic and modern Hollywood and British studio films. But before entering the film industry, John worked for over a decade for the US electronics giant Motorola, where he held a number of senior international management positions. So today we're going to be talking about mental health and self-care, and that's been a, a huge theme for us at Creative Entrepreneurs Club and I know for the guys at Made Brave as well. So John, thank you so much for being here and I'm going to kick off with Andrew who's going to get going on some prompts, some questions, some conversations. Um, this cool. is going to be quite free-flowing so um, let's just see where it takes us and please feel free to reach out on the buttons below if you want to ask a question. Over to you guys. Great. Yeah. So John, we'll, we'll, we'll eventually let you get speaking at some point <laughs> after me and Rachel just, we're just going to talk all day. John doesn't have like a voice. Us. It's not like uh, us. <laughs> no. So John, maybe to kick us off, you know, it's, uh, it's always interesting when people talk about you and they do your intro, but it's kind of good to um, understand in your own words, you know, what, what you do, where your expertise lie, you know, because I know you pretty well and I, you know, I know you've got a huge wealth, as Rachel said, of, of knowledge in the film and creative industries, but of, obviously today as well, we're here to talk about kind of mental well-being and such like so maybe just give us a wee chat through of who you are and kind of what your day-to-day -day looks like at the moment thanks well, of course andrew and, and and thanks rachel for that introduction yeah no i've i've been uh, reading um up about zoom etiquette so i've learned to smile nod and not speak until i'm spoken to so uh th th that's why that's good evening everyone thank you for spending uh this, this hour with us I, ho I hope you do find it of value a little bit, th thanks Andrew and Rachel for that introduction. My, my background, I am an electronic engineer, I went to Glasgow University. So I do have a, an electronics background. I have a binary brain, yes, no. Um, and I think that's very interesting. Uh, and, and I have to challenge that regularly, particularly in, in my later life where, as, as Rachel said, I co-founded Park Circus Films. Um, I chose to leave the electronics industry, and that was interesting because while we're going through a period of uncertainty just now, my role at Motorola was um, future product development. I could sense that electronics was becoming a commodity, and I was one of the first people to choose to leave that particular industry. And, and for a period, actually, a period of uncertainty, I did my own thing for a while. I, I, I did some charity work. I marketed Glasgow. I did architecture. I did design. I looked at going to university. Lots of different things. And then got together with a, a, a partner to found Park Circus in the film space, which is another passion of mine. Took that from kitchen table, literally, right through to uh, a company that employs 50 people in three countries, in fact, in fact, four countries, if you could, Scotland, England, separate countries, offices here in Glasgow, London, Paris, and LA. And interestingly, I chose to sell Park Circus, uh, not because I had to, but because um, it was a good opportunity, it worked for the business plan, it made sense, it was about collaboration, partnership, and survival for that company. Um, and then I stepped down, became a non-exec board member, and have since chosen to leave that and let that go as well. Um, and when I left Park Circus about five years ago, I became a, a, a trained coach. I, I went through formal coaching training, invested myself. And that was really because at that point, I was being asked by organisations like Scottish Enterprise, Creative Scotland as well, to, 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 to coach other companies. And really what I was doing was having, having a coffee with them, to be honest. Um, I was probably more mentoring than coaching, thinking back. But so now I do mentoring, I do coaching, but, but I now know what I'm doing, I hope, uh, in, in those more formal senses. So I know what coaching is, I know what mentoring is, I know what teaching is, I know what supervision is and consultancy, I know the difference there. And I do work um, a lot, within the, mainly in the creative industries, um, in UK, both in Scotland and in London, some, some international as well, and across the creative industries in music and film, advertising, newspaper, jewellery design, you name it, um, throughout those industries. And that's great because one of the things that I think I'm able to do is bring together how problems are being looked at and tackled in, in different sectors. You know, the music industry is different from film in how, they're, how they work together, 
but there's a lot of similarities, as you could guess. And it's the same with London and Scotland, particularly when things are, are funded. There's, there's more funding available in Scotland than there is in London, but equally there's pros and cons to that. So it's quite useful to have that um, different experience, different activities. Andrew, you also asked what, um, what my day's currently like. Um, it's interesting. I, I've been reflecting on this a lot. There's, I, I have one indulgence in life, and that is I love going out for breakfast. I go out for breakfast almost every day, if I'm traveling or not. It's my treat. I, it's not, it's, not a, 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 it's usually a bowl of porridge. It's not a bowl of gruel, as I would call it. Bowl of porridge. But I like, the, I like the ceremony of it. I like taking the time out. I like reading the newspapers, catching up, planning my day. And it's what I'd like to do. So that's been disrupted, obviously. So I'm having to make my porridge in the house, which is very mindful. And I do turn it. You know, a wooden spoon, right hand. Everyone cake. else's audio is as bad as mine. Yeah, but no, it's delicious. No. Get rid of those evil spirits and 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 just add add things to it by taking time out and then going for my walk thereafter. So again, replacing one ritual for another ritual. But what's interesting as well is I, I I've been doing coaching by by Zoom, by Skype, by video for quite a few years, mainly because uh, you know, I coach all over Scotland, I coach in London. Um, it can be that, that sometimes it's, it, time is important and you might, can't always be together. So it's very effective to do that. Now I don't have a choice. I am not enjoying it so much. It's, it's fine. I, I love coaching by Zoom. But when the choice is taken away from me, I am truculent. I'm more reluctant to do it. And I think there's something that we're all feeling a bit like that. When our choice is taken away, then, then, then we start to react in a different way. Mm -hmm. John, it's been a huge Rich. challenge. Yeah, John, it's been a huge challenge for, for many people in such a short space of time, and we all need to find coping strategies. Um, can you suggest a few ways that we could do that, a few ways to look after our mental health? How do we weather the current situation? Yes, um, again, I, for me, the key thing is, um, you know, we're talking about mental health here, is the ability to think about thinking. And, mm. and, and, and that, uh, I think when I, I was looking at trying to get my thoughts together for this call, and it all came down to that. Um, there's a great long technical term for it. It's on Wikipedia, which is um, metacognition. I, I love it. Metacognition, which basically means thinking about thinking or knowing about knowing, uh, which is in the first line, which is great. And, and by that, it's, it's, it's about emotional intelligence and there's that, uh, the understanding that your brain can think, your brain thinks thoughts, which obviously are there, we, we understand that, but then it's thinking about those thoughts and the impact that's having on you and the ability, perhaps, if you, if you can, to look at techniques of bringing those thoughts um, into uh, into your mind and, and, and be able to challenge them, support them, influence them in some ways. And that's, that's not easy. It, it goes beyond, in my opinion, m mindful meditation, which is something mm -hmm. that's particularly important. I do, and I do practice mindful meditation. That's great because anyone that does practice, I don't know who's on the call, but anyone who does practice mindful meditation will um, appreciate that the idea there is not to suppress thoughts, but simply as thoughts come in, so go, there's a thought, there's a feeling, and then let it go. Um, when you're actually thinking about thinking, it's similar, but the idea is to look at your thought and say, is this a helpful thought? What should I do with this thought? And being able to challenge it and either grasp it and go with it, or challenge it and, and move it on, let it go, influence it in some way. And that's tough. It's very, very tough, but I do think it's the key thing to try and do. Lots of techniques out there. Um, you know, therapy and counselling use cognitive behaviour therapy. That's, you know, that, that is a technique for thinking about thinking, if everyone's ever used that approach. Um, NLP, Neural Instinct Programming, is another approach to use. Or it can simply be, in, in coaching, they use a stop model, which is very simplistic, which is, you know, S is for stop what you're doing. T is for take a deep breath, et cetera. O is for observing, just observe what's going on. And then P is for proceed by thinking, what would be a good next step? So the idea of that stop model is 
you know, someone says something to you and you immediately want to react, the idea is to try and stop, take a deep breath and think, what would be a good reaction to this? Do I, you know, do, do, do I sort of say what really is my first thought in my mind, but perhaps that's not the most helpful or would that be helpful? And it's surprising how quickly the brain works. You think you've not got time to do that. You have got time to do that. So I would say anything that allows you to increase your emotional uh, uh, and intellectual intelligence and to allow you to think about thinking and those thoughts and challenge your thoughts. And I'm happy to expand on that if, if it's of interest to people, but I don't want to sort of go down that route unnecessarily. Yeah. Some of the, sorry, I was just going to ask, some of, the, some of those elements that people are feeling at the moment, though, is this overwhelming feeling and people are feel anxiety perhaps in a way that they've never felt before. And I'm a fan of good stress. I'm not a fan of bad stress. And so when we're in an environment that creates bad stress or this feeling of anxiety, how do we, what can we do, John, to help us self-coach, if you like? Um, I'm also a big fan of um, mobile phone headphones. They've been a savior for me because I can talk to myself and everybody else thinks I'm on the phone. And that's been a huge help um, because you can, you know, there's, you can coach yourself out of it. But what can we do? Have you got any top tips of what we can do to come overcome that anxiety, that feeling in your stomach that you know is irrational, um, but you just feel overwhelmed in the moment? Um, and I agree with you, Rachel, about good and bad stress. I, I, I... I, th I think it's interesting because we all, we all have a comfort zone and, and in your comfort zone you don't feel any stress and, and, and things become second nature to you um, and, and you almost you don't have to think back to that idea of thinking about thinking I, I, and one thing I would challenge on this a little bit is you know outside your comfort zone uh, there's a learning zone and then mm -hmm. beyond that there's a panic zone and you can go so so far if you like and I think we need to be careful that if you're in your learning zone, you can feel anxious and you can feel a bit, oh, this is a bit of a, you know, a sort of tricky situation. How do I deal with this? Particularly if you're in a situation that you've not dealt with before. And I don't think many of us have been through a pandemic before. So we're all in a learning zone a bit. And that's, I think it's a danger that you start to feel anxious, but it's, you're learning and, 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 and it's, it's, and this is almost the wrong word, but it's quite exciting in some ways. It's, it's, it's interesting, it's challenging, while it might be concerning as well. And it's being able to, to judge where you are in that. Are, are you actually in the panic zone or are you in, in the learning zone? And I think to, to, if, if you are genuinely panicking, then the best thing to do is, is to speak about it. Speak to other people, tr get, get, get the support required uh, that, that's required in that. Um, Self-coaching is important, but I think sometimes the, the idea there is, is, is don't keep it inside, but is, you'll know, be able to reach out and, and, and express yourself and say, you know, verbalize, keep a journal, it can be very useful. How do I feel? Why am I feeling this? And again, start, start to question it. Am I in a panic zone? Am I learning? Is this just a very challenging time? Because it is challenging. It's challenging for us all. And it is, oh, a bit scary, but... Or am I actually genuinely panicking and, and, and I do need to do something about it? I need to, you know, really look after myself and, 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 and be generous. And I think that's first and foremost is this is a time to be generous to ourselves. Not, not to give ourselves a hard time, but be generous to ourselves. And, you know, I notice it at many levels just now where sometimes even things that, that are apparently good can create pressure. For example, at the moment, People are doing some very generous things. Generally, they're giving their time for nothing. They're doing a lot of generous things. They're making sourdough bread or they're, whatever they're doing. And there's almost a competition goes on there. I need to make you know, sourdough bread. I need to give my family as good cook food as that. Perhaps if you can't cook. Or I need to give my time away for nothing. But if you're struggling money-wise, that, that's not necessarily a good idea. Just surviving day-to-day and then hopefully thriving in the future is good enough. So sometimes things are good enough. And I think it is that don't compare to others. Be generous to yourself. The little things matter. Getting through this period is important. 
if you can learn, if you can do different things, great. It might not be sustainable. You might be able to do it some days, but not other days. But equally, going further on, um, it, perhaps there will be a time where you do feel stronger and, and, and can, do, can do more then. Yeah. And, do, and do you think there's a kind of balance to find there, John, in terms of like, you know, I, you know, myself, you know, only talking from my own experience here that, you know, those first few days when, you know, started this realization of, you know, what was happening and we had loads of projects cancelled and loads of jobs stopped. And, you know, obviously I've got kind of nearly 50 salaries to support as well. And so I went very, very much into that panic mode and very much into, well, here's Mr. Fortnite coming. Can I help? <laughs> um, so, uh, so, you know, I, I went very much in that kind of panic stage for the first few days and kind of, you know, almost couldn't breathe, you know, because I was just thinking, how am I going to pay for 50 salaries and jobs aren't going to be here and such like, but, you know, and I kind of, for me, I, you know, I almost had to kind of do that stage to then, and then when I, you know, when I sort of came to the realization, actually, I'm going to be part of the solution and help some other people, it gave me clear purpose at that point, and it, it sort of set my, my belly on fire, if you like, and that gave me kind of purpose, and then what that did was, because I had something to focus on, uh, that gave me that something to focus on, and then that brought loads of t inbound messaging, all, loads of opportunity, I suppose, um, and so I suppose, you know, I'm just conscious that people don't just, just go look after themselves, and then by looking after themselves, they shut them off, they shut themselves off to the world. It's like, you know, I suppose when's the right moment to, to sort of, you know, push yourself out in the world and, and help sort of, you know, I, I keep talking about activating your purpose and kind of finding, finding a reason of being because like Mark Logan last week spoke about, you know, it's okay to grieve for a bit, but we've also got to realize that we've got to create action now. And, you know, if we don't create action, we're going to be stuck in the position we're in. So, you know, when, when's that moment to, you know, you know, it's a kind of, I don't know if there's a question here actually, but like, you know, how do you find that balance of kind of looking after yourself, but making sure you don't stop because the world's not going to stop and you've got to keep moving. No, no, I, I, I was on Mark's call um, last week, which was great. And I, I completely agree, agree with him on the, you know, the bereavement process. And I think what Mark was talking about was, you know, one thing that we've all got grief for is our expected future. We mm. planned things that clearly aren't going to happen, be it you know from a gig to a business plan. It it it's you know that the, there is a period of uh, we did not anticipate this. No one did. Mm. Um, and and you know I'm a, I do I do um, lecturing and teaching around business planning, and, and if you haven't seen me do that, you know I talk about the idea of your business plan being a garden that should be tended. It should always be updated, and you know not mm -hmm. something that's static, if you like. Um, and I think, you know, in, in, in this period, that's something that that idea of being flexible and nimble is, is, is very important. But you're right, Andrew, as much as, um, that, that's what I'm saying about being generous to yourself. It's interesting, when you look at um, mental, the mental well-being, a lot of the neuroscience just now talks about the, 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 um, the way the brain is wired and, 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 and the gut is wired as well that it, it is as scary a time as a saber-toothed tiger. That, that we're, we're, those more physical things, starvation and um, the, the intimate attack that may happen to us, um, make us make us react in a certain way. The, the impact that we're having on, on our cognitive mind is, is, is the same. It's actually the same with, within the nervous system. It has the same reaction. There's, there's, one of the, when, when I was studying coaching there, and I know we quote lots of um, coaching people, but there's a, 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 Dr. David Rock has written uh, a couple of books. One's called Quiet Leadership, which um, is it's actually, it's very hard to read, I'll be honest, but it's, it's an interesting concept. And the other one's called Your Brain at Work. But he's written papers and he, he calls it the scarf model, which I quite like. And it's, you know, it's a scarf that you use around your, your neck, literally, if you remember from that. And what that scarf model does, it talks about five things that are under threat um, at this moment in time or at any moment in time. And, and, and I think one of the things about going beyond bereavement is increasing awareness, increasing your knowledge. And it's a bit like mindfulness when you're able to, to say, oh, there's a thought. The idea of the scarf model is, is, is be aware of what is under attack. And, and once you know that, then you can start addressing it. And, and that, so, you know, for me, the first step is, yes, bereave what you've given up, but then increase your awareness. I think you did that, Andrew, by, by you know, what could I do? What's going on here? Let me research. 
let me learn, etc., and get some of your facts together. And by that, I don't mean sitting listening, you know, to endless news. And and and, and you know, if you are listening to news, listen to the fact. You know, listen to the government's um, briefing if you want to hear what they're saying. But don't necessarily listen to all the different analysis. Their analysis is no better than your own. Um, so I wouldn't get sucked into that. But I think there's an awareness. You know, I was um, coaching someone recently um, who's uncertain about their job position and. I said to him, what, what notice are you on? And he didn't know whether he was on one month, three months, or six months notice. He, he didn't know the answer to that. And I'm like, go and find out, because that can influence, because he was concerned, mm. could he be made redundant while he was on uh, being furloughed? What was the question? The answer is actually, yes, you can be, but under your notice terms. So I said, what notice are you on? He said, well, I have no idea. You know, but panic, panic, panic. So my idea was at least find out and then see how you feel. So he's, he's in six months' notice. Did that make him feel better? Yes, uh, it did make him feel better. And then he was able to move on a bit from that, whereas he was in that, you know, that panic mode. And that, as well as one thing about talking to other people, you know, I'm a trained coach. Uh, coaches can do this, but other people can do that where um, you're able to, to just stop around in those circles and say, wait a minute, you'll find, find, find a, a reason. I want to go back to my scarf model. I didn't tell you what it stood for, so I will do, because I think that's quite important. S is for status, and this is your, your, your position in, in, in not just the world, but in your company. In, in, you know, and it's interesting just now because when we look at status, we talk about key workers nowadays, and your know, delivery men and women and people have gone from you know, a key worker. You know, their status in our network just now has been elevated. So, you know, you see them in the street, you say hello to them, you're really nice to them, and ab absolutely should be, and that's great. Equally, people who are used to high status positions are furloughed at home. So, is your status under attack? Potentially. You know, I've also got um, friends and colleagues who are in, you know, are in jobs and, and they're working at home, and they've actually discovered they don't have much to do. And um, they're working as much as they can, but because they don't have meetings is the same way, and they don't have... Uh, distractions, you don't have coffee breaks, you don't have gossip or whatever, they actually don't have much to do. That, that, that affects the subconscious, that affects their status. They, it's almost like the emperor's new clothes, they've been exposed and that is hard to deal with. So status is one of them. Number two, the C is um, certainty. Now, we do not know what's happening here. When will this end? What is going on? We don't know. All our certainty is under attack. So the idea is that you know, if your status is under attack and your certainty is under attack, that's two out of five. Number three, the A, is autonomy. Your ability to make your own decisions, your ability um, to be in control of your destiny and what you want to do, that is also under attack just now. Um, we are being told what to do by government. We can't go out freely. We can't see people we want to see. So that's under attack as well. And number uh, five, number four, the R stands for, it actually stands for relatedness, which is the idea of connection to other people. Again, social distancing, my goodness, that's under attack. And the last one is fairness. You know, is this fair? Um, it, it's not fair. Now, again, bereavement, you know, people are saying, oh my goodness, this is not fair. So if you look at that, status, certainty, autonomy, relate, uh, relatedness, and fairness, all five of them are being compromised at the moment. And in his paper, what was interesting, when great periods of anxiety happens, go back to your question, Andrew, is when more than one of these is, um, is compromised at any one time. And at the moment, probably all five are for most people. So the strategy is label them, go down that list and say, yes, 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 here's how it is being done. Now, what can I do about it? How can I increase my relatedness when I can't see people I want to see? The idea is you might want to connect more by Zoom. Give people a call, as Rachel was saying earlier on. Phone people, um, connect differently. Who else can I connect with? Expand your network. So try and compensate it in some ways. If you can't, you're not in control of when you can go out, what are you in control of? You know, I am in control of what I use for my one exercise a day, how long I go out for, when I do it. I like to do it first thing in the morning because I feel good all day. If it's hanging over me, I'm frightened it might be taken away from me. I'm frightened my government announcement says you can't go out anymore. So I'll do it when I can do it. 
and you know, at least I'm in control of that. So what am I in control of? And the same with things like um, you know, certainty. What can you be certain of? There's a great exercise, which I, again, I like doing coaching, which is, you know, what I know, full stop, and what I don't know, full stop, two columns. And if you actually do that, it's a surprisingly how little you know, full stop, no, no ifs and buts, and how much you don't know, if you like. So the idea of certainty often actually is, you know, yes, we had, we had business plans, we had a gig maybe we were going to, that may not have happened anyway. We don't know. Uh, we can't predict the future. But the idea is, is there anything I can actually help to, to reduce that? And sometimes be just that understanding of, actually, we're not sure about many things in life. I, do I, I, I need to try and learn not to cling on to that expectation that my plans will always be met that way and try and be more flexible, more nimble uh, within that. Excellent. Rachel, you're, so, you're going to say something. Yeah, I was going to say, sorry, I was going to jump in about work-life balance because I think that's one of the things that's so important right now. You know, we I've been speaking to a lot of people around, you're not working at home, you're working from home. Um, and there's, sort of, there's subtle differences, you know, when the choice was a day-to-day -day choice of when you could choose for a bit of peace and quiet and you'd go and work from home. Um, now we're working at home and we're living at home. And I suppose there's a question about how do you get your work-life balance correct in that space around your mental health and self-care? Yeah, I think, I think there's two things here, Rachel. I, 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 I don't believe in, in work-life balance. I'm not a, balance is interesting because you know, to me, balance is a, you know, it's a, it's a seesaw. It, the idea is that you know, to, to increase one, the other must go down. To me, that, that is all, all, all about balance. It, you know, it's also a very fragile thing. It's quite hard, it's hard to get pen to, to, to balance, if you like. It, 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 it's quite a delicate thing and it feels fragile. I feel it can be broken in some ways. I prefer to talk about harmony because I think that if you've got life, work, harmony, they, they, they can coexist. And the idea is that they can coexist and, and complement each other, not fight each other. And I think for, for me, it, it's about seeking that harmony if you can. I think the strategy I would use, however, particularly about work and, and family as well, it's about good habits and routines and those little um, successes that, 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 that allow you to do that. And, 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 and you know, particularly we're going back to what you've control over. You don't have control over much, but if you are able to put routine in your day, you know, I, I, and accountability is quite good for that. Uh, I, you know, I, I talk about doing mindfulness. I, I use an app to do mindfulness. I use a Headspace app uh, and it's 10 minutes a day. And yes, I'm on a run streak. I'm on so many hundred days of it. I know if I miss it, um, I'll lose that run streak. Now I am, you know, think about thinking. I am aware um, of what, you know, I'm, I'm not addicted to it in any way, but I do use it for accountability because I want to do it every day. And that's enough for me just to say it's only 10 minutes when will I do it? Um, and actually, I did it before this call. I, I was ready for this call. I had 10 minutes. Before. I thought, I'm, I'm going to do my mindfulness now. Actually, a great time to do it. Let me just put that 10 minutes in. So I think it's it's a case of not trying to get them to fight, but trying to get them to work together. So if you get family commitments, schedule that time. And that's why, you know, we did talk about this should go on for one hour, no more than that. It's 5.38. We shouldn't go on beyond that because the idea is let's, let, 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 let's put that, period in, commit to that, deliver on it if we can, and then move on to something else and, and bring in that balance, be that thinking about what to eat tonight or some schooling activity or, or exercise and, and, and move on from that. So, you know, for me, it's a case of, yes, it has to coexist, but bring harmony into it. Mm. Great. Great. So just while we've got a little space just now, just um, has anyone got any comments they want to drop in or questions? Um, or if you want to raise your hand, I can unmute you and you can actually use your voice, but don't, don't feel pressured to. And if not, if nothing appears within the next couple of seconds, we'll jump in with another question for John just now. Um, Go on, someone raise a hand, please. Or give me a thumbs down so I know there's no questions coming. <laughs> <laughs> Whichever way it works. <laughs> There's a thumbs down there for Mark. Thanks, Mark. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, Derek. Okay, Derek, I'll unmute you. There we go. Um, <clears throat> uh, 
Yeah, just fantastic hearing you talk just now, John. I think you struck a lot of chords, I think, for me. And, and I've had um, issues with mental health way back five, six years. And certainly the coping strategies that I got from my therapist at the time certainly has stood me a good stead for now. Uh, what the question I want to ask is, I think we'll all be kind of, uh, it's about motivation. And I think I like this idea of having a system and habits and, you know, a wee bit every day. And it's that thing of, I, I'm a kind of, I like a routine. And I think what helped me way back then was I made myself get up at a certain time to start with a better diet and go on, and as my therapist says, have a bit of me time in the morning before you switch on anything, just, you know, a bit of reading, a bit of music and whatever else. I think, you know, with, with broken sleep and, and strange dreams this last sort of few weeks, it's, it, it's certainly, you know, gotten back into that. And so that question is about motivation and that thing about willpower can be a bit uh, elusive in these times. I'm just curious if that system approach is something that you've come across and it certainly helped me in that, that bit of structure and that bit of habit to get you through uh, the situation. Dave, thank you so much for that. Um, and, and I absolutely agree with you that, that, that those routine is, it, it's important, it's rich, if, if it feels good for you, you know, I was going back to my breakfast routine, that is a routine, that is worth the investment I, I make every morning when I'm able to do it. Because it, it does, it, 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 there's something in it that just sets me up well and I feel good for, for doing it. Motivation is an issue, actually. And I, and I think that, we, we, again, be generous to ourselves. The, 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 the humans are, are lazy creatures. We, we, we are generally lazy creatures for our survival. It is important. When we're under threat, I talked about threat earlier on, the idea is that you, you, you store your energy within you in case you're going to be attacked. Uh, and as I said before, you know, we are literally all under attack just now because, because of things that make us feel good um, are being compromised. So the idea is that that actually can make you feel a bit, a bit lazy and, and, and it's understood. So you almost have to go within yourself and, and, and make effort to, 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 to get yourself out of that. And I think, you know, for me, it's, again, it's being aware of that, being aware that sometimes... Uh, I, I, when I do coaching, it's interesting, I, I reflect as I love coaching. I love one-to-one -one coaching and I get so much energy for doing it. Anytime before a coaching session, this, this I know for sure, 15 minutes before a coaching session, I feel dread and I don't want to do it and I want the coachee to cancel. Now, what that is, and again, because I'm thinking about thinking, that is my brain saying, do you know, John, this will drain your energy a bit. This is actually going to deplete your reserves you don't want to do it don't do it don't do it you'll be lazy sit it just just try, hopefully cancel you might be good because you you know it's a bit of an abstract now I, I i just ride through that go through it and, and i love it and, and go there but I'm, I'm so used to it i see it coming again that mindfulness way going ah there's that you know that that evil thing is coming in and just just try and move on from it but i think equally you know um it it, it is tough to 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 um, to, to stay motivated at times and, and therefore when, when you do do things that, 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 that make you feel good um, one of the things that I like doing is I like looking at a list of tasks that I would like to achieve that day it, realistically write them down um, interestingly I'm a great I, I, I'm a digital person and I'm currently doing a lot I've got, got here a lot of writing in my little moleskin notepad that's because I'm a, the way the brain works, I'm a believer that sometimes sketching and writing and colored pens and things are quite good at this time. They're quite good for getting the brain down. It's the way the brain works. If you like um, flow diagrams or mind maps, these things are all very good just now. It, better than typing. Um, and I, I am a digital person. I love being paperless. I normally do type. But at times like this, it's quite good when you're thinking about thinking to, to sometimes write things down and use coloured pencils and get your thoughts down and challenge them and, and, and things like that. So, so go back to this idea about motivation. Write down what you'd like to do today. Realistically, don't give yourself stretch goals. You know, just what you'd like to do today. And then look at them and say, what one do I have the energy to do just now? Which one do I actually feel you know, I, I, I want to do just now? And often it's not, it's not necessarily the easiest one. It's usually not the hardest one. The idea of eat the frog for breakfast, I'm, I'm not a big fan of necessarily, unless that's the one that you do have the energy to do. 
that you'll have a look at them and whatever one resonates, whatever it is, doesn't matter what it is, do it. And doing that will give you the energy to do the next one. And I can guarantee you by the time you get to the third one, it will be the frog, it will be the hardest one to do. And sometimes if you just do that one thereafter, then that means that um, you, you, you finish the day and you do then start to feel much more motivated and, and more content to do that. Derek, do you, do you, does that resonate with you? Does that sort of sit with where you are? Um, yeah, I, I think, you know, the, the frog is always to do the hard call first, <laughs> get that one out of the way in the day is a bit easier. Um, and I think it is that thing as well. And, and reading about um, knowing um, your best time of the day as well, you know, are, are you an early riser or a, a, a night owl or an early bird and thinking when's your best time to do things and to do certain things. And things. I, I like that and certainly... I'm more productive in the morning and doing certain things and I, I leave other things in the afternoon. So I know the best chance for me to make that call will be in the morning when I've, I'm up, I'm ready, I can handle it and go for it. Where in the, in the afternoon, I'll probably do a bit more paperwork and things like that just to sort of get it through. It's just figuring out, and obviously just now that's kind of upended a wee bit because it's kind of all online and all that. So I think, but I like the idea of, yeah, just certainly, um, I agree, but writing it down, I, I think uh, doing more drawing is certainly, you know, the, yeah. what you call it, the sketch notes sort of idea and trying to really, that's been my thing to try and, and, and probably like most handwriting is horrible. So trying to do these things in the morning and in the morning I try and just write it as best I can and then I'll watch a, a video or something or a TED talk or something and try and do a sketch you know, I say try because it's just that learning curve so that, that's where I am just now and just and then and it's a wee bit every day and, it, and, it, and it's no worrying it's not about it's no race it's just you yeah, just keep going and just every day is a new day and, and just keep building and before you know it when you look back I think and you do see the differences and it's been a couple of weeks but yeah so did resonate thanks for Great. that no, no, no th thanks for that and um you know, i agree that that little often and and also reward yourself you know, go back to the the scarf model i talked about you know it, it comes from the the threat versus a um, reward and the idea is that you know in human nature you're either threatened by something in which case you're you, you're scared or you're driven towards something in which case it's, it is reward and, and reward's funny you know, and, and, you know it's not all about you know cream cakes and, and my Negroni at uh, six o'clock. Um, it, it can go beyond that. Um, and as much, you know, for example, I, again, I know myself, I, I, I'm slightly bizarre. Maybe it's my enduring brain. I, I, I love doing my accounts. I actually love uh, getting my accounts in order. I, I use free agent um, and, and there's something really therapeutic about it. I reward my, you know, I could, you know, I could do it first in the morning. You can do I, mine if you want, John. I'll do <laughs> mine if, that, if that'll make you feel better. Gig economy, absolutely. I love it. I absolutely love it. I'm happy to get anyone's free agent account. But I reward myself with that. It sounds crazy, but you know, I don't do it first thing in the morning. But once in a couple of things, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, let me check what the overnight bike transfer, you know, and I'll do it and get it in order, etc. So sometimes you can reward yourself by other tasks things you love doing and you know and again go back to Rachel's thing about you know balancing that sometimes that can be a, a not work task but reward yourself doing something else that's outside work. Okay. John you talked you talked about um you know we're talking there about motivation and you know sometimes it's that self-motivation that you need um you know I, I just this, these sort of times we often look for leaders and you know um what does a leader look like and you know sometimes I find myself you know I've got to do an all hands and much like you, you know, you've led a company of, you know, 50 people. And sometimes you're thinking, how am I going to motivate a whole team here? Um, and, you know, you sometimes before that call, the same way as we spoke about before you go on a workshop, you're thinking, I don't have the energy. I don't, you know, where am I going to find this? And I've often found that actually sometimes being vulnerable with the team or more often than not, you know, being vulnerable and telling them and actually going into that all hands and saying, look, I don't, I don't have anything, you know, I don't have the answer for you today. And that's what I'm going to, that's what my leadership speech is that, that I don't, I'm not going to pretend that I'm not going to make something up. I just wonder if you had any sort of other tips of, you know, what makes a great leader right now? You know, I'm sure some people on this call might have to lead, um, you know, whether it's a family, whether it's a, a relationship, whether it's a, you know, whether it's a team or a company, you know, and I'm sure there's something we can take from your leadership um, experience of all the years that you did that. 
Yeah, th- you, you, th- thanks for that, Andrew. I think, yeah, I, I think you're absolutely right. You know, one, one of the things, and I think Mark actually talked to, uh, touched on it last week as well, is, is during these times you can't over-communicate. I think that's key. And I think if you can show a bit of vulnerability and authenticity, authentic yourself as well you know if, you, if you're authentic if that's how you're feeling and you share that to your team um i think they appreciate that and it, you know it's not about acting it's about being authentic and and, and being vulnerable because it is vulnerable vulnerable times there and i think it's interesting you know i, I talked about leaving the electronics industry my last job at motor was actually selling the division and during that period um that there was always a threat of redundancy there was a threat of the, the deal might fall through and the company had to get rid of due, due to um conflict of interest had to get rid of, of that division it, it was com, 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 potentially competing for another part of the business and so during that period um again when people are facing that it's all about communication and how you communicate and it's back to awareness you know facts what are you know and, and almost a scarf model as well look at those different elements and how can you increase those how can you increase certainty how can you increase people you know being aware of things and, and feeling they're in control of things and um, how can you make them feel better etc so i think it's that idea of um being aware of what is impacting people and try and work on the opposite of that and um you know and also appreciate people are different some people you know, for example a lot of companies are doing um you know zoom cocktails just now and happy hour zooms etc that's probably not for everyone but if, if it works for some people do it but they, they don't make you know rachel you were great at the beginning of this call you know put your static picture up if you want um you know it, people interact in different ways some people are happy asking questions some people might not be same with these things but i think giving them the option to do it and giving them the choice is good because we do have choice giving a choice no matter how small it feels can be quite important you know if you're going down to four days a week for example some companies are doing let them pick which day they're not working um for, for them or or, or or whatever you know the I, if, if that's possible the idea of giving choice within the restrictions of not having any choice and the same with some of the other elements we've talked about as well mm. and how how do you do that john if you are the solo entrepreneur because the same principles do apply in a network um, and I do a lot of conversations with people about how to network effectively and how to um, support and manage and increase your ecosystem and, and support the people around you. So those principles apply within an organisation. But what happens if you're the solo entrepreneur? How can you bring that type of approach to your own work and the way that you engage? Do you know, it's, it's interesting. I, I, I don't necessarily know the answer to that, but what I can do is speak from my own experience and, and, and what I, you know, I, 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 um, I, I, I consider things as a company, but it's my company and I'm the sole employee of that company. Um, so, um, I, you know, I, I, I'm very much in that situation. And I guess, and again, perhaps it's unfair because I, I'm, I'm doing this as a trained coach, but what I, I, I'm doing this week, I did last week, was and, and this is not just about this is not about money and clients necessarily but about my network and i was thinking about people and showing empathy to people and trying to understand what perhaps i could do or work with them not make them feel better but would be helpful to mm-hmm. them and I think you know, there's something that's quite interesting just now. I am, an, and that's why I did share about being in the gym. I'm, I'm an analytical person, but at this moment in time, being analytical is not that helpful because analytical is all about problem solving and you know setting goals and, and a little bit of that's important. But what is important is more empathetic skills. And again, it is a balance between an, an, you know analyzing and being empathetic. And when you look at you know empathy. You know, the key things are new ideas, you know, being open to people and the environment. And at the moment, the environment's changing. There's lots of people out there and new ideas are, you know, are, are going out, going there. So for me, it's more about being empathetic towards your network, Rachel, trying to mm-hmm. understand what's going on for them, perhaps, mm-hmm. and then having a conversation about it. Mm-hmm. Um, not trying to sell your old services, not trying to you know, survive necessarily. If, if, if collaboration work, whatever comes from it naturally, great. Um, and much better to do something constructive like that 
than than sit there and try and cling on to to to, to the way things were before. You know, there's a phrase in coaching I always like to share, and it's about letting go to let come, and I think that's very important. And I would say just now that you know when you look at um, the, the the sort of world we're in just now, I. I, 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 I think a lot of it's about trying to, to let go of things. If you look at, coaching in general talks about, you know, your performance equals your potential minus interference. It's, it's, a, it's, a, great, it's, it's a great sort of um, formula. So your performance, your actual performance now equals your potential minus your interference. So in coaching we say, what, what's holding you back? What is the interference? Mm -hmm. At the moment, our interference is, you know, it's everywhere on many levels. So reduce it, reduce your interference, try and do a bit less, try and let things go. Don't add layers of things. You know, it's back to what Derek was talking about um, in, in, in relation to habits, etc. Good habits, but not lots of layers, not overcomplicating things, not adding things. I must do this, I must do that, I must do that and just simplifying, going back to, you know, and that's why a lot of people advise, you know, if you're checking in with someone, just saying, how are you? It can be simple. Um, what's going on? You know, try to talk. It, these sort of one, you know, liner, simple things can be can be quite useful. I I am also a great believer in, in, in the universe. When someone comes into my mind, you know, I, I will reach out to them. I'll often start something, you come into my mind, House things, and, and I mean that genuinely. Not not a list of you know Salesforce, you know next contacts. Let's follow up with this and see if there's a business there. It's like they genuinely have come into my mind, and I can guarantee usually that there's a reason for that. And people say that's really funny you did that because th this happened. If you like, and, and I do it. I do that personally as well. I, I do have friends, and, and and interestingly. You know, it happened to me last week where there was a friend came to my mind, and I, I, very strangely, I actually reached out to him and said, "How's things? How's your parents?" Not a question I would normally ask for, and it did actually turn out that his parents, by chance, there was a situation going on there where where, where one had been um, actually tested positive for coronavirus, and there was a lot of concern in the family. And it just came into my mind. I don't know why it did, but I just reached out and did it, and that idea being genuinely authentic. So I think sometimes. It's, it, for me, it's about um, tapping into your, the human nature of things and then reach out to your network and expanding your network as well. I think it's a great time mm -hmm. to do that. I think there's something, uh, John, really, I like that, that piece about, like, you know, not, not too much of everything. You know, like, we all received emails before that they've been, like, three pages long and they've got questions all the way through and you're just like, oh, I, can't, I, can't, I can't even face it. So you don't even end up replying to that email. Uh, someone, someone told me recently, like, the best email to, to get a response from someone should be nine words long. And, and that proves that kind of simplicity. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, that, you know, as human beings, we, if there's too much there, you, you don't know where to start, you don't know how to, you know, and you won't respond. So again, mm -hmm. it works in when you're asking someone how you are. I like that simplicity of how are you? Mm -hmm. You know, it's just as simple as it needs to be. I do, and I practice my preaching that, you know, if I'm confirming a call for someone, I'll say, my subject, my email, confirming your phone call at 4 p.m. And then in the actual email, I can say, oh, how's things going, et cetera, blah, blah. So they can just read the title and they know it's, it's on you. And to this point, again, about certainty, I do that, overdo that now. I over communicate. I confirm every call I've got, even if I confirmed it yesterday or set it up yesterday, I'll confirm it again within 10 minutes or oh, et cetera, simply because it's good to have things like that when you're aware of it. But, but, but keep, keep communication simple and, 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 mm -hmm. and, and strip back. Interestingly, I mean, a comics company um, considered thinking at one point, I thought we considered calling it curated thinking or some use the word curated. And I think curation is an underrated skill. Yeah. Idea, curation is not about adding things. It's easy to collect. Mm -hmm. It's much harder to take away and yeah. to curate and to decide. And it's back to this whole, we're talking about balance and harmony. Often it's about curation and letting go and releasing the layers. Well, I'm conscious of time and that seems like the perfect um, comment to end on, given that we were dead on a six o'clock finish. Unless there's anybody wants to put anything in the chat, or if anybody wants to ask John one final comment, um, just as a tip, I have a thumb rule on my phone. If I have to do that three times on an email with my thumb to scroll down, I delete the email. <laughs> I'll keep that mind. <laughs> one, two, three. Nah, go on. <laughs> Um, 
Is everybody all right? I'm just looking around this beautiful picture of people um, and and lovely other pictures. Are we all good? Yeah. No, great. I think, uh, you know, I'd just like to say thanks for everyone, you know, taking this, this hour out your evening and thanks to John especially. Um, you know, I, I took a lot from that and uh, I'll be implementing some of it tomorrow, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> so, so we are going to be running these sessions every Tuesday. This, they're not always going to be on the same topic. So next week we'll have, um, oh, sorry, at five o'clock, as Rachel said, five o'clock every Tuesday. So if you want to bookmark some sort of space in your diary um, and then come find out which, which, which one we're doing each week, there'll be a different link at each week, obviously. Um, and then we're you know obviously we're trying to decide whether we like this meeting format where we see everyone or we want the webinar format so we'll, we'll maybe play around we might even play around on different platforms because zoom has its challenges as i'm sure we've all figured out over the last week or so um so yeah you know we, we'll be sharing this again so um we'll, we'll share this on our channels um either tonight or tomorrow morning so if you want to look back on any of that stuff and i'm sure john would be more than happy if you wanted to reach out with any questions um that you, you were maybe too frightened to ask on in front of a group or just didn't feel appropriate um, and 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 of course again myself or rachel if, if there's any help that we can um of course we'll, we will do if we can um other than that i just just say thanks i'm away to get my dinner i don't know about you but uh, i'm starving i've been doing really long days and uh, i keep forgetting to eat john so i need some tips for how to how to do to remember to eat yeah i've not had Richard, that problem just say andrew <laughs> i i absolutely if, if anyone wants to reach out to me either through the creative entrepreneurs uh, club network or LinkedIn or whatever, please do. And, and you know, I'll, I'll happy to go back to anyone uh, individually uh, for anything that's come up. I did mention a few models, happy to share those um, as well if, uh, if it would be useful to anyone. So absolutely. Thanks everyone. Okay, Bye. have a good night. We'll see Thank you next week, you. hopefully. All right, take week. care. Cheerio. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.